In this video, we're going to talk about how to make the Asaki oscillator, which uses a single transistor. This circuit doesn't use many components, which is nice. So the first thing we need is a power source. And so we're going to use a battery for that. And then we need a resistor and a capacitor. Now across the capacitor, we're going to connect an NPN transistor. Now we're only going to use two of the three pins of this transistor. We're going to connect the positive terminal of the capacitor to the emitter pin and the collector pin will be connected to ground or the negative terminal of the battery. So in this circuit, notice that the NPN transistor is used in reverse. In most circuits, the collector is connected to the positive terminal of the battery while the emitter goes to ground. But in this circuit, it's in reverse. And the base of the NPN transistor is not being used in this circuit. Now the voltage of the battery needs to be relatively high. If the voltage is too low, the circuit may fail to oscillate. So I'm going to use a 12 volt battery in this case. The output is taken across the emitter and the collector pins of the NPN transistor. And what you can also do is put a bypass capacitor to prevent current flowing from the battery going into the load circuit. So this could be a 1000 microfarad capacitor. Now, when I test this circuit myself, I decided to use a one kilo ohm resistor and the capacitor, I set it to 0.1 microfarads. And so I got like a sawtooth wave, which looks something like this. And the frequency at the output was measured to be approximately 20.8 kilohertz. The peak voltage from the bottom of the sawtooth waves to the top was measured to be about 1.8 volts. Now, if you increase the value of R, the frequency of the circuit decreases. And also, if you increase the value of C, the frequency decreases. So the frequency is determined by the RC network of the Asaki oscillator. Now, when I use a resistance of 2.2 kilo ohms and a capacitance of 220 microfarads, I got a waveform that looks something like this. The frequency was very low. It was measured to be around 18 hertz. But let's talk about what's happening here. So during the first part of the wave, the capacitor is charging. Current from the battery flows through R and charges up the capacitor C. Now, as the voltage increases, eventually it reaches a point known as the reverse breakdown voltage of the transistor. Once the voltage reaches the threshold point, the emitter and the collector regions of the NPN transistor begins to conduct. And at that point, the battery no longer charges the capacitor. Both the battery and the capacitor will discharge its energy through the transistor. The voltage across the transistor is the same as the voltage of the capacitor. So as the capacitor discharges, its voltage goes down. And so that's what's happening here. During the first part, the capacitor progressively charges. And then once the breakdown voltage is reached, it quickly discharges through that transistor. And so by adjusting the value of R, you can adjust the shape of the waveform. If, if you increase R, the charging time will increase because it's going to take a longer time for the capacitor to charge. Decreasing R will allow the charging time to decrease. And so thus you can affect the shape of the waveform. But nevertheless, this is how you can construct the Asaki oscillator using the battery, 
one resistor, one capacitor, and a transistor. Now the second capacitor is not necessary, but it's good to prevent the load circuit from affecting this circuit. Because without that capacitor, current can flow from the battery, through the resistor, and through the load circuit, thus affecting the operation of this oscillator. So it's important to have that bypass capacitor. Now there are some other things that you can do with this circuit. For instance, you can convert the sawtooth wave into a sine wave using an LC filter network. So let me adjust this circuit. So I'm going to keep the bypass capacitor here, but I'm going to connect this to an inductor and to another capacitor. So we're going to keep the value of the bypass capacitor very high so that it doesn't affect the frequency of the circuit. Now, in order to convert this into a sine wave, you want the LC filter to match the frequency at the output, at the emitter of the transistor. So if you were to connect a meter to this point or even this point, you would still get the sawtooth wave at a frequency, which I said was at 20.8 kilohertz. Now, we need to choose the appropriate values of LNC to convert this wave into a decent sine wave. Won't be perfect, but it'll be a, an okay sine wave. Now, the inductor that I had available was a 10 millihenry inductor. But when I measured its actual value, it was measured to be around 9.34 millihenries. The resonant frequency of an LC network is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC. So if you square both sides of that equation, you get F squared is equal to 1 over 4 pi squared times LC. So we can get rid of the square root. Now rearranging the equation to calculate the capacitance that we need, it's going to be 1 over 4 pi squared F squared times L. Now, when designing a practical circuit, we won't get the precise capacitance that we're going to get from this formula. But at least it gives us an idea of the approximate capacitance that we could use to make a decent sine wave at the output. So let's plug in the numbers. So the frequency is 20.8 kilohertz. So that's 20,800 hertz, and don't forget to square it. And the inductance is 9.34 millihenries. That's 9.34 times 10 to the minus 3, or 0 0.00934 henrys. And you could put this whole thing in one single set of parentheses. So you should get 6.3 times 10 to the negative 9 farads. 10 to the minus 9 is equivalent to nano. So what we need to use is a 6.3 nanofarad capacitor. Now I don't have that around, so I use the closest value that I did have. Therefore I use a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor. Now of course you can add another capacitor in parallel to that, maybe like a 1 nanofarad capacitor, and it can be 5.7, but using that value, the circuit work, it converted the sawtooth wave into a sine wave. Now the sine wave wasn't perfect. One part of it was wider than the other part, so it wasn't a nice even sine wave, but it definitely wasn't a sawtooth wave anymore. So that's how you can convert the sawtooth wave into a decent sine wave, is by using an LC filter at the output of this circuit. Now something interesting happened when I use the LC filter. The voltage didn't go down. In fact, it went up. The voltage from the bottom to the top of the sawtooth wave was measured to be about 1.8 volts. 
whereas for the sine wave, after using the LC filter network, it went up to 4 volts peak to peak. Now you might be wondering, why did the voltage increase? Well, it has to do with the inductor. Inductors are known to increase the voltage, especially in circuits like the boost converter circuit. What happens is, when the current flowing through the inductor increases, the inductor is storing energy. The magnetic field expands. The magnetic field created by an inductor is proportional to the current flowing through it. So as the current goes up, the magnetic field expands. Now, when the current drops suddenly, when, it, when the current decreases rapidly, the inductor, the magnetic field inside the inductor collapses. And as a result, in the process of it collapsing, it releases that stored energy. It generates an induced current that tries to support the failing current or the decrease in current. And that induced current also is accompanied by an induced voltage. And that induced voltage tends to be very, very high. And in this case, it, it's responsible for generating the voltage that's higher here as opposed to the voltage that we had uh, prior to using the LC network. So that could be one possible explanation in terms of why the voltage is higher after using the LC filter compared to before using it.